Welcome to the very first Eurorack focused modular walkthrough. Today I'm going to be focusing on the Rossum Trident, which is a fantastic little oscillator from uh, Rossum Electro. So this is actually the second Trident that I've owned. I had one, I sold it. Terrible mistake. It will never happen again. But I just really missed the kind of uh, textures that you can create using the cross mod uh, options that just you have so many different routing options uh, which is what's so great about modular in the first place right so you could set this thing up as just three independent oscillators you've got oscillator one up here two here and three down here which obviously you have triangle saw and pulse for each of them here all are available uh, simultaneously one thing I really love to do with the Trident is create these rhythmic kind of drony textures. As a matter of fact, uh, shameless promotion. Um, I've just released a, an entire sample pack that has a ton of Trident drones that really more focuses on long evolving patches, um, tones that you can drop into your multi-sampler or can be a backdrop for your kind of dark cinematic uh, productions. So you can find that link in the description. Um, if you would like to grab some for free, there's a link down there where you can grab some free examples of those samples. A sample sampler, if you will. Another thing that I really like doing is creating rhythmic effects by uh, using different modulators and the quote-unquote zing modulation, which we you can see here, uh, zing modulation. I think it's kind of a ring modulator in which, you know, the pitch and uh, waveform of this oscillator affects this one almost like FM um, in a way. So I don't know 100% what's happening there because I'm not the most technically minded person when it comes to this stuff. What I want to do today is create some or show you how you can create some kind of interesting evolving rhythms and textures using just one complex oscillator like this. This is my favorite complex oscillator. And again, I sold it once and I just had to buy another one because uh, I missed it way too much, way more than I thought I would. So it's definitely worth the HP that it takes up, in my opinion. Okay, let's get into some patching. I'm going to take, let's take a sawtooth out of here. I'm gonna go into a VCA first. I'm actually also going to use a shorter patch cable because that just seemed a little extreme. Don't want to make too big of a mess here. Okay, uh, now if I turn up my VCA, you can hear. I do have that running through. I don't know if you can see in the main camera angle. I also have another camera angle set up over here so that hopefully you can see what is happening. In this case, the signal chain is oscillator into VCA, then into the filter, because I'm really just using this as a mixer. The VCA is a mixer in this case. And from the filter into uh, RFX, which is the Strymon Magneto in this case, and then out to a mixer. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we have a C. I turn that back up and it is pretty rich, pretty rich harmonically, um, as you would expect from a good sawtooth. And this is a really buzzy one, so um, i turn that down just a touch so I can still speak. I do have that filter down just a bit just to save your ears and mine as I try to speak over this. Um, now, if I bring in the zing modulation, you will immediately hear something is happening, right? And that's because, as I mentioned, the sync is automatically engaged to on. So you can imagine if I had an LFO or something going into that pitch, we've already got something interesting, right? If I turn sync off, now this is a square wave as well. So I've got a really uh, low frequency, as low as it will go, um, oscillator 2, square pulse wave, affecting in kind of a ring mod type of way, uh, oscillator 1, right? So I turn that off, nothing's happening. 
If I turn the Zing modulator on oscillator three, and we get the blend. This one is a triangle wave. So things can get really, <laughs> point taken, things can get really crazy really fast. Uh, it's a great thing just to you know hit record and let it go while you turn some knobs. Uh, that's how I'll do a lot of my sound design uh, and obviously did a lot of that for the sound pack uh, that I just released called Attic Drones. Okay, so let's see if we can cause something interesting to happen kind of rhythmically. First, I just want to try patching the module into itself. Let's say you don't have a lot of LFOs or whatever in your system. You just want to grab the Trident and, you know, the other components you need to make a modular synth voice and get started. Well, you can do that because I'm going to take oscillator 2, which is that pulse wave, and I'm going to have that... Let's turn it back up here. Feed into the exponential FM. change the symmetry of the wave of oscillator 2, which is our modulating uh, oscillator in this case. So it's serving as the, like the LFO almost. But the symmetry, getting back to my original point before I got distracted, is the pulse width in this case, which goes all the way through zero. Now, let's say that's a little too crazy for us and we want to make it a little bit more musical. something, isn't it? So, that is just Oscillator 1 being affected by oscillator 2 and oscillator 3 as our modulating waves there. <laughs> and already that's... I mean, you could do something with that, right? Come on. So we see already that we can definitely make things happen just patching the module into itself. I've only done... Uh, only just scratched the surface here. Let's take, let's make this another pulse wave because that can make for some interesting rhythmic things. If I filter that down, obviously, we can get rid of some of the harshness. We can control the phase of oscillator 3. Opening up the pulse width there. Let's run that through our delay.
Ooh. So, yeah, <laughs> you see what I mean, right? Um, and I'm literally just looking for sweet spots here, right? So there's, it's just a matter of trying things, finding those sweet spots. There are so many in there if you just kind of take your time and, and, and just mess around with it for a while. That's what is so great and creatively rich about modular synthesis. And even if you just have something like Ableton, uh, which has a lot of modular components to it. Uh, once you start thinking in this way that, oh, I can just hook up something that's audio rate or like a noise source and have that modulate something else, that is a really powerful uh, tool to have at your disposal that can create some sounds that are unique to you, which is what we're all kind of looking for, right? I've kind of shown you what you can do just with the module itself, uh, patching it back into itself. Now what I would like to do is show you kind of how we can use something like uh, an LFO, especially an LFO that has tempo sync, uh, like the Quad LFO from Maleco, which is one of my absolute favorite modules, and so much, in fact, that I have two of them. If you notice, if I like something, why not have a second one, right? I, the reason I love this LFO is because not only do you have four independent LFOs, uh, which you can have either running really fast at audio rates, uh, slow moving LFO, uh, and this is per LFO, or you can tempo sync it, right? So in this case, uh, it is everything here is tempo sync to my Eloquencer. That's my master clock. And all I have to do is run the clock out and now it's running through a malt uh, and then going to the quad LFO. But all I'm doing is running the clock from the Eloquencer to the quad LFO, and then it stays perfectly in step. Um, the other really great thing about this LFO is, you can record automation for each of these uh, parameters. Frequency, phase, shape, distort, and level. So in this case, uh, for each one of these steps, it's going to record the position. Um, so you can see the, the uh, pulse wave is changing uh, frequencies, and it's all tempo synced, right? So it's all moving in clock divisions. That is awesome. Okay, we can do lots of interesting things with that. I could also adjust the level so it brings it in and out in the same way. I can change this to uh, be random, so it chooses steps at random, so I never know what's gonna happen. I can use pendulum, reverse, or forward. So yeah, lots of great things. So I get so much inspiration from just using the quad LFO to rhythmically impact the trident. It is just ridiculous.
Okay, let's change the rhythm here. I can clear out that uh, recorded modulation. See by engaging the oscillator syncs, we still get all that modulation, but it's all locked in sync. Uh, so none of the crazy harmonics kind of brings everything back in very quickly to a more musical place. We turn off the Zing Mod and we're right back to our initial sawtooth. So yeah, this is a really powerful oscillator. And I think you can see just in a few minutes of me messing around with it, literally starting with no real plan. I've already come up with something that I could easily improvise over, um, either with a synth or with, at the piano or whatever. Or I could start to build an entire modular bass track just around this first element because it's so inspiring uh, it could be really the backbone so I'll throw in some examples here maybe of where I've done that kind of thing in the past and maybe a more <laughs> planned out sort of way If you like this kind of content and you want to see the way I use modules or modular in general or other synthesizers, various music production techniques that I employ, um, if you want to see that kind of thing on a regular basis, feel free to subscribe, enable notifications, all of that nonsense that we're supposed to say at the end of YouTube videos. And I would love to see you back uh, in another video again sometime. So check out those free samples. Uh, that I have that feature this module very heavily. There's an entire folder of just kind of evolving uh, loopable drones in there. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.